I can put it side by side. Those 250 run. All right, guys. So as you can see from the looks of this tire, I've lined the footage up on both bikes, the 350 on the left, the 250 on the right, and we are basically matched exactly. So I'm just going to go tearing out through here. Now, these, these runs were done like, I don't know, uh, like a month or so apart. As you can see, it's a little bit more blown out on the left where I'm riding the, you know, the, the 350 um, as opposed to on the right, I'm on the 250. And the 250 is holding its own very, very well. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I was feeling really good this day on the 350 on the bike on the left. Um, and you'll see up up here coming uh, coming up. I'm just a little bit ahead of myself on the 350. Um, so I'm, I'll be just in front. You'll see it right about. I'm going to stop the footage right here, and you'll see that little kind of patch up on the up on the on the right. You can see it just barely up out of the frame, or barely up there in the frame. So you can see I'm about a second ahead of myself when I'm riding the 350 this day. That isn't to say that the 250 couldn't do this and couldn't actually keep up, but uh, makes it a little bit easier if you do make a mistake um, to be able to, to keep your times up. The other thing to keep in mind though is that might have just been that I was feeling it this day. I mean sometimes you just you're you're just you just don't have it. And I think I really kind of had it this day when I was riding the 350. I was, I was feeling pretty spunky. Um, but I do think that if I went back to back, I could ride the 250 just as fast on kind of like a desert dash through, you know, through the desert right here. This isn't something where you need like a crap load of horsepower. It's hard to tell exactly how far ahead I am on the 350, but I would say it's somewhere between 60 and 80 feet. Um, I probably, uh, maybe I could go back and do better on that 250 with another run because I don't think it's slow at all, but uh, that day I was a little bit faster on the 350. All right, we're going to do that hill climb right there on this one. I did it on the YZ250 FX and the KTM 250 XCF, so we'll do it on the 350 XCF. Okay, here we are at the exact same place at the exact same time on the two bikes. And this is one place that I, I can admit that the 350 did have a little bit of an advantage over the 250 because there's just enough more power, you know, torque and horsepower on reserve um, for when you roll on the throttle, there's just enough stink there left in the motor that it made it a little bit easier to get up the hill on the 350. I'd say the 350 has about a six to eight foot gap here at the tree. And now as we've gone through the steepest part of the hill and coming up on this last obstacle, the 350 has about a 20, 20 foot gap on the 250. And that's just because it has so much more extra horsepower to, do, to, to use that it just pulled harder up that hill and it was, it was easier to climb on the 350. There's no doubt about that. Actually, this thing climbed that noticeably easier than the 250. Actually, uh, almost wheelied over on that towards the middle there and didn't need to use any clutch to get up I mean here at the top right there I used a little bit of clutch just because I dinked off on that section um, but this sucker actually has you know a little bit more power definitely than the 250 a little bit more grunt to go up that and I know you can't tell, but it is actually pretty dang steep. <laughs> I'm sure it looks flat on a GoPro. Today's rider spotlight is for Frank Norget. He's out of Bordeaux, France, and uh, him and his riding buddies are, call themselves the Red Mule, and they love riding their KTMs, and uh, so I thought we'd give them a shout-out here in uh, Bordeaux, France. Thanks, guys.